Now we can begin. The letter by Crystal Eastman, first published in The Liberator on December 1st of 1920. The feminist must have an answer to these questions, and she has. The immediate feminist program must involve voluntary motherhood. Freedom of any kind of woman is hardly worth considering unless it is assumed that they will know how to control the size of their families. Birth control is just an elementary and essential in our propaganda as equal pay. Women are to have children when they want them. That's the first thing. Then ensures some freedom of the occupational choice. Those who do not wish to be mothers will not have an undersized occupation thrust upon them by accident. And those who do wish to be mothers may choose in general way how many years of their lives they will devote to the occupation of child raising. But is there any way of ensuring a woman's economic independence while child raising is her chosen occupation? Or must she sink into that dependent state from which, as we all know, it is so hard to rise again? That brings us to the fourth feature of our program, motherhood endowment. It seems the only way we can keep mothers free at least in the capitalist society, is by the establishment of a principle that the occupation of a raising children is peculiarly and directly a service to society, and that the mother upon whom the necessity and the privilege of performing this service naturally falls is entitled an adequate economic reward from the principle is accepted. But with a generous endowment of motherhood provided by the legislation with all the laws against voluntary motherhood and education, its methods repealed, with the feminist ideal of education accepted in the home and school, with all the special barriers removed in every field of human activity, there is no reason why women should not become almost a human being. It will be time enough then to consider whether she has a soul.